as part of our North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel, Player Interviews. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you probably the greatest athlete that's come out of Tonawanda, one of the greatest athletes out of Syracuse University, one of the greatest athletes out of Western New York, the one and only Rick Casada. Rick, glad to have you this morning here uh, from Fort Erie, Ontario, your, ho your home away from home. How's everything going these days? Thank you, Ed. It's, um, I kind of got, I haven't had butterflies in 40 years and I have them today. Um, thank you so much. And um, I've been looking forward to, uh, to this and um, it feels good. You don't do many interviews. I've looked around on the internet. You, you have not done many interviews over the years. And we're very, very uh, flattered that you're allowing us to speak to you today. Well, well, thank you. It's um, back then that, you know, this is 50 years ago. So um, the, a lot of things are different, but um, I, I, sure, I sure appreciate uh, uh, you taking the time and, um, and um, I'm excited about this. You look in great shape. Look like you can, you know, probably throw a spiral, you know, 50 yards right now. And uh, it looks like you've taken care of yourself all these years. Well, I go to I go to the Y seven days a week. The only thing when I retired from sports, you worked out every day of your life. So I worked out. I go seven days a week, and I I basically reload every day to get me through the next day. You were born in Buffalo. Uh, you your family migrated to Tonawanda, and your athletic career just took off like a like a shock all-american in football all-american in baseball all nfl and basketball um tell us about you know that time period in your life the high school sports and, and better yet high school football well it started out two blocks from the peace bridge on the west side of buffalo i was probably the youngest kid in the whole neighborhood, everybody else was 12 to 14 years old, and I was about eight to nine. So they took me under their wing. So by the time I was 12 years old, I was playing with the 15-year-old team. And all that ended when my, my dad built a house in the city of Tonawanda, and I moved from the west side of Buffalo in seventh grade and um, I got the Tonawanda Junior High in eighth grade from the west side of Buffalo. Um, had I stayed in Buffalo, I, I would have gone to Grover Cleveland High School. So I got the Tonawanda as a, a you know, freshman in um, Little League football. And, um, and, and it all started there. And um, the rest is history. Just to refresh our memories, what years did you, wait, years did you play varsity football at Tonawanda? Um, seven, uh, 61, 62, three and four. So you played four years on the varsity level? No, um, we, we had to play freshman football. And then I played JV football with Coach Ramsey and then two years of varsity. So you, you played under Chuck, Chuck Ramsey in Tonawanda then too? Yes, yes, I did. Oh, my goodness. Well, he, uh, uh, Coach Ramsey, he's, he gets around over all these years still. He's still, he's still alive and he's still kicking and uh, he's still doing well. So he, he sure is. I had him, um, I had him out to my restaurant about a year ago with uh, a few other, a few, a few of the boys. And uh, he looked, this is about a year ago. He, he looked good. He just, you know, it was good to see Coach Ramsey. When did you know that you had some God-given talents to play football and, and sports? Well, again, growing up on the West Side, I was just a young kid, the youngest kid. And I got beat, you know, the Amoya brothers would beat me up twice a week. And um, I got to Tonawanda in eighth grade. And the, I, I was ready for Little League football, but because of my upbringing, I was, I was, you know, maybe a year ahead of the boys and, and, and that kind of helped. If it wasn't for all the, you know, Tootie and Junior and Nino and all the boys on the West Side bringing me up from, uh, you know, 
at that young age in my life, then, you know, and then on top of it, uh, to Tonawanda, and it was like going to, it was like going to a Notre Dame school. I mean, this is, you know, they had good athletes to good everything there. How would you um, talk about your high school football career at Tonawanda? I well, mean, you, you had some great seasons and, and some, well, some great teammates as well, too. We had uh, Coach Wack, uh, John Wachtowski as our freshman coach, and he was, he was tough as nails. He, he toughened us up. He just, he, no nonsense coach. And uh, by the time we went up to junior varsity with Coach Ramsey, my freshman year, I, w- I went in confident and tough as nails. And then we, um, Coach Ramsey had us in JV football. Um, we, went, we, went, we lost one game in four years. So we went 7-0, and and um, he gave us the finesse. He, he taught us how he would run formations, and he told us how to be a quarterback, how to be a halfback, and what to look for and what to expect. So by the time... By the time we got up to my, you know, to varsity football with Coach Small, we were tough as nails and we had a little bit of finesse. So Ramsey and Wachtowski are handing a bunch of athletes to Clint Small that are pretty good athletes and know what they're doing. Uh, it's, just, it's just simply amazing and mind boggling. Um, how was it to play under Coach Small? He was, uh, well, the guys used to <laughs> said that they, that's, that's Rick's dad. <laughs> Coach Small liked me very much, and they used to call him, that's Rick's dad. He, he's, um, my one philosophy in life is I played a lot of football, but I played my great football when I had great coaching growing yeah. up. Coach Small was, the, he got me when I would, when I went to Syracuse after four years at Tonawanda, I was ready. I was ready for that next level. Well, then you moved on from from Tonawanda to, to Syracuse and coach Ben Schwartzwalter. I mean, and, and you're going from one legend to another legend. Um, ironically, a throwing quarterback going to a running school at Syracuse. Well, holy cow. I, that's just, a, it's a quick story. I had my luggage at Notre Dame. The next day I had my plane tickets for Miami and I went and I wound up at Syracuse. So I got there about a couple of weeks late and they had to send my luggage from Notre Dame to Syracuse. And I, the next day I was on Syracuse University's campus and I was the freshman guy that's about three weeks behind everybody. And there's 18 quarterbacks, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, and 18 quarterbacks. And, and I, I think I cried for about three straight days thinking about it. Whoa. And then um, we had good coaches. You know what I mean? Every, you know, I got along with my teammates and we had, we had great coaching. When you got the play, when you became the starter, let's see, your back backfield was Floyd Little, Hall of Famer, Larry Zonka, Hall of Famer, Tom Coughlin, future Hall of Famer. Not a bad way to, to have a college career. Well, I tell you, well, they listen to me when I talk. I says, if you come in my backfield and treat me good, I'll make you a Hall of Famer. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, Larry Zonka was a freshman with me. And Coughlin was our slot back from Waterloo. And then to have a guy like Floyd Little, I mean, it was just, um, holy cow. You think about it today, I've, I've had some pretty good backfields in my life. And Little and Zonka and Coughlin. Um, in Hawaii, in the World Football League, I had Calvin Hill and Dwayne Thomas in my backfield. So I, I, I was blessed with a lot of good, um, a lot of good talent around me, which, you know, which helped my game too. Well, speaking of the World Football League, you had uh, a quarterback on your roster with a great, one of the greatest sports names ever, Sonny Sixkiller from the University of Washington. 
and you had a guy named Jim Fossil, who turned out to be a pretty good uh, pro football coach with the New York Giants and won a Super Bowl. Have you ever thought, looked at, looked back and said to yourself and pinched yourself and said, wow, all this stuff happening to a kid from Tonawanda? Well, it was, I went from Hawaii. Uh, I came home. I came home from with the boys during happy hour. And um, I said, Diane, um, I'm not signing with, I'm not signing with the Argos. I played out my option. I said, I'm going to Hawaii and the World Football League. They gave me a three-year contract, no cut, no trade. I got a nice bonus, and here I am, uh, finally, with four downs instead of three. <laughs> and, and, and I'm I'm in Hawaii for a year. That I just, uh, you know, it, it's it's magical. Um, Sunny Six Killer and I are like brothers today. Mike Giddings looked at us in the first quarterback meeting. He says, I just want you guys to know, he says, this is my first head coaching job. He says, and I got a Dago from Buffalo and an Indian from Washington. <laughs> uh, the rest is history. Sonny Six and I, um, I, I told Six, the next team I go to after the World Football League, I says, I'm going to wear number six. So I wound up back in Hamilton in the CFL, and I have war number six. Wow, you kept your word. <laughs> Let me ask you, let's go, let's go back a little bit to Syracuse University, your, your senior year. You get in the bowl game uh, against UCLA, and you outplay Gary Beban, who happens to be the Heisman Trophy winner. My question to you is, was there opportunity for you to go to the American Football League with any teams there? or the National Football League. Uh, instead, uh, you ended up going to the Canadian Football League. Well, I'm surprised. I, was, I wasn't I was drafted. I was mad at myself, but um, I only threw my senior year, I might have thrown 150 passes the whole year. With, with Zonko and Little, and you know, we ran the ball all the time. I didn't. I didn't get drafted, and and so um, Saskatchewan drafted me in the CFL. So I just okay. My rookie year, I wound up in Saskatchewan, you know, in um, in the CFL my first year, and um, and then you know I, after I played there uh, eight or nine years, and then you know the rest is history. <laughs> You had a great, you've had a great career. Um, you went into the Greater Buffalo Sports Hall of Fame in 2002. I'm sure you're in several other Hall of Fames as well, too. Let me just go back to your high school career a little bit and uh, the TNT games. We talked last week and you said the only thing you ever ha had to do with North Tonawanda was you got into a lot of fights when you were, came over to, from Tonawanda to North Tonawanda. How was that rivalry? against North Tonawanda back then? And, and uh, um, was it good football? Was it intense football? How would you describe it? Well, being the little Italian boy from the west side of Buffalo and meeting North Tonawanda guys, for some reason in that era, whatever, I got along with, you know, everybody, but all – Dave Anastasi, Dave Vona, Ron Colatarsi. We didn't like NT guys, and they didn't like us. It almost was to the point of hate. You know, that I was wondering what the hell the coaches were putting in our brains back then. But the one time in my life during that four-year period, we didn't like each other. We despised each other. And if I went to North Tonawanda and ran into them, I would just look at them and wouldn't even talk to them. Today, when they're at the third warders and I happen to run into them, we get a hug and laugh. But the intensity that, that there was from North Tonawanda back then was on a scale of one to 10, about a 10. We just did not like each other for whatever reason that we were brought up with. And, and that, always, that was always number one. Nowadays, 
Jimmy Pepsodero is one of my best buddies and so on and so forth. But um, the rivalry back then, we played in in football. Tonawanda, we probably had the best league in New York State in, in high school. The toughest, the best, Niagara Falls, um, Lockport, um, Kenmore East, Kenmore West. Uh, it, it's Every team was good. Every team was good, and they had a lot of athletes, Donnie Gilbert, um, you know, and, and a bunch of guys going on to play college football. So that era of, of being brought up, and the key to me of going to Syracuse was not only my teammates, but like I said earlier, I had the best coaching in my life. And when I have the best coaching in my life, I'm going to kick ass. Chuck Ramsey, John Wetkowski, Clint Small, and a host of others, they were none better, none better than that. Do you have any regrets regarding your high school career or, or maybe your college career or your pro career? Well, this, this interview isn't long enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you know what? I don't have any regrets. It's, I surmise, I surmise my career, as I'll say it in, in, in one sentence, I had a chance to do what a lot of people dream about. And that's what I've taken away most out of the game. And I, and I enjoy, and I enjoy sharing my stories, except for one thing, whatever I say now, you got to divide by four. <laughs> Why is that? Because I didn't throw eight touchdown passes. <laughs> You were a very good baseball player on top of it. And there are stories out there that you were courted by the New York Yankees. And why the choice of football and going to Syracuse University over baseball? Well, in baseball, you play 160 games. In football, you only play 16. And I got in enough trouble with 16 games. Can you <laughs> see me with 160? <laughs> on top of it, what would you rather be, a shortstop or a quarterback? I'd rather be a quarterback. Good point there. Anything about your Tonawanda career that you'd like to talk about or add in this interview that I haven't asked you? No, not really. It was, again, getting, you know, getting to Niagara Street in Tonawanda in eighth grade. And uh, the teammates, uh, you know, the teammates and and the coaching and the, and the people, you know, this was, you know, this was a new life for me, and they treated me very, you know, they treated me very well. I'm trying to think of other things to ask you. I mean, I could probably sit there in your restaurant when you come across finally, and the the borders open and this pandemic is over. But um, I will catch up with you because I need to get a Rick Casada autograph football. I'll bring the football. I'll bring the Sharpie. You just give me the signature. and it'll, it'll go alongside my Floyd Little football that I have. With that being said, Rick Casada, thank you so much for joining us here today on the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. Take care of yourself. Be well. And we'll catch up with one another soon. Thanks, Ed. I appreciate it. And looking forward to having a beer with you. <laughs>